Hello, I'm Vishruta Bin, Faculty of Project Management at Mary G. And with me is sitting Mr. Rajat Johri, Faculty of Project Management with Mary G. And today, students, we are going to expose you to the basic contents of project management from UPSC Engineering Services Examination Viewpoint and what kind of strategy you should develop in order to tackle the questions in the examination. First of all, let me tell you that this is relatively a new subject which has been introduced only in the year 2017. 2017 in the first paper on the subject, we had only eight questions from project management, but in the year 2018, the following year, we had uh, 11 questions from project management. So generally you can expect in general studies paper from project management 10 to 12 questions. As far as the preparation strategy is concerned, the first thing to begin with, which we should understand, is that UPSC merely mentions basic concepts of project management. But it would not be sufficient merely to expose ourselves to basic concepts. Therefore, here it made easy. Our strategy is to expose you comprehensively to all dimensions of the subject, primarily the project life cycle. The project life cycle basically is nothing but a sequence of different phases of the project starting with initiation, then planning, then execution of the project with monitoring and controlling and finally closing of the project. So project life cycle, as I said, that rather covers all aspects of project and application of the tenets and principles of management to project is what is known as project management in order to achieve the objectives of the project. Every project eventually has to achieve its objectives. That is the aim of the project management. Now, as far as the projects are concerned, first thing we need to understand is that projects have certain basic characteristics. For example, projects are temporary, projects are unique, projects have resource optimality, projects are always worked out under various constraints and eventually projects have to achieve the objectives of their scope, time, quality, cost uh, within the available resources in the given budget. Right. Now with these characteristics, there are some more things we need to understand that in modern times most of the projects are customer oriented. They are driven by the needs of the customer. But in any case, whatever the project may be, it will have some acceptance criteria. If the acceptance criteria of the project are met with, then the project is acceptable to the client or the sponsor and uh, is also a successful project. Yeah. If the acceptance criteria are not met with due to whatever reasons, then it cannot be said to be a successful project. Success of the project depends upon the effectiveness of the project management. Now, I was briefly talking to you about um, the project life cycle in that the most important uh, starting point is the examination of the idea of the project which we call as the feasibility. Yeah. Now, feasibility has several dimensions. Once the feasibility studies are done and feasibility report is produced, then the sponsor comes to know whether the project is worth going through or not. Whether it is uh, beneficial to conduct or to carry forward the project or not, it is a part of a feasibility report. Basically, in this phase, uh, we go through in detail what is the technical parameters involved in a project, what is the market demand parameters, what are the market demand parameters, uh, how the social impact is there uh, from the project, whether it is a positive impact to the society, whether it is a negative impact to the society. So it is a part of economic analysis basically. Uh, we go through the financial part also, what, uh, what is the required investment for the project, how we can have an opportunity for that investment, how we can arrange that investment. So this is a part of financial analysis, whether the project is uh, uh, financially visible, feasible or not, viable or not. So this is a part of a financial analysis. At the last, we also check whether whatever the studies we have conducted, technical, market parameters, uh, financial parameters, social parameters, whether with respect to these parameters, is there is any risk involved in a project or not means every project is liable for certain risk, right? So if every project is liable for any risk, every risk, so therefore what kind of a risk can be possible? How we can minimize that risk? Whether if the risk is 
very uh, like uh, in, in a risk is uh, huge so how we can minimize that risk this is a part of a strategy conducted during a feasibility study so uh, in a initiation phase this complete study is conducted on a basis of this complete study we make a one report that is called feasibility report and the senior management decide whether the project is feasible or not on a basis of this feasibility report only whether the project is viable or not on a basis of this feasibility report only so once we have done with the feasibility part then we move on to the next phase that is called the planning phase that is our unit second that is planning and scheduling so in this phase what we do we make a schedule in such a way that the resource optimization can be achieved how the resource optimization can be achieved the time should be such that the cost is not high the cost is not low it is as per the requirement of the project means the optimum cost is determined in this phase in a scheduling phase or in a planning phase in a scheduling phase the schedule is like the two types of schedule are there like for the r and d project the schedule are uh, uh, schedule is made in uh, different manner and for the traditional projects like a, like a building project like a industrial project which are of basically a repetitive type there the schedule is made according to the experience knowledge and the skills the senior management is having so therefore the schedule of traditional project is always easy to make out but whereas the schedule of r and d project is hard to determine because r and d project is having a hit and trial or having a basically iterations so therefore it is very hard to determine the schedule absolute schedule in the starting but in this unit we are more focused why because uh, last year in 2018 there were about seven question directly from this unit so uh, in a very coming uh, years uh, somewhere the upsc uh, may ask some question from this unit again again so therefore you have to focus more on this unit and this unit will provide a edge to the mechanical and the civil student how how now they are having a industrial engineering mechanical students and the civil students are having part and cpm so they are covering this topic in detail uh, in their technical subjects so therefore this topic will be like very very beneficial for the civil and mechanical students because they are covering this topic in a project management they are covering this same topic in a uh, in a technical subjects also so this unit is important then we are moving to the next unit that is project execution in this phase basically we decide what need to be done how to be done so in this monitoring and controlling is required every project need to be conducted as per the schedule as per the plan as per the design as per the specifications or as per the detail mentioned in a planning phase so if any project has been executed as per the plan as per the schedule as per the design then we can say the project is somewhere positively going as per the planning and that project is basically a traditional project closure and the traditional project closure is one where the client is satisfied with the contractor and the client issues the no objection certificate to the contractor so therefore this need to be recognized by the client whether the project has been completed as per his satisfaction as per the plan as per the schedule or not so therefore the post audit is conducted in a last phase that is called project closure when we talk about the project closure in a audit phase we conduct our three types of audit basically technical audit economic audit that is our social audit basically and the last and the final is financial audit and these three audit determines the project that has been completed that has been executed is it as per the plan as per the schedule or not so to determine the actual cost incurred in a project to determine the actual quality of the project to determine the actual time incurred in a project it is very compulsory to conduct a audit after execution so the last unit is all about project closure and post audit phase so this is basically the syllabus that you need to cover along with the first introductory unit that is project life cycle and the basic concept of the project management and the topic that is very important after the after covering these unit that is tenders and contract in a tenders and contract we have to cover types of tenders 
types of contract because in every engineering services department you will find the tendering and contracting system so this is this becomes more important for a engineer after a re recruitment in an engineering services department how the contracting is are of various type like turnkey contracting non turnkey contracting turnkey contracting is where the contractor is having a whole sole responsibility but in a non turnkey contract the senior management is having a skills knowledge and experience relevant knowledge with respect to the project that is supposed to be executed therefore senior management makes the plan first according to that plan the contractor is hired or procured so that is basically a non turnkey contract so in besides, this unit besides this entire contracting is basically through the tendering process in the tendering process we start with the issue of uh, notice inviting tender and then the tenders are invited rates are quoted by the contract uh, the tenderers tender purchase committee is made tender purchase committee examines the rates quoted and prepares what is known as comparative statement of tenders and subsequently one bidder is selected right the selected bidder is awarded the contract the once the contract is awarded then all the clauses terms and conditions which are there in the contract based on these terms and conditions the the contractor has to execute the entire thing. this is basically a non turnkey contract uh, if the contractor is having all the responsibilities of the tendering along with the execution then it is a turnkey contract so uh, this unit becomes very important i think from uh, engineering services point of view because uh, this is very beneficial and very helpful even after uh, uh, the selection um, in a engineering services departments like cpwd railways etc so this are that these are the topic that you are supposed to cover from a engineering services prelims point of view and if you are covering that much of the syllabus that much of the topics then i think uh, you are covering the maximum part of the project management because i have gone through many books whatever the topics i have mentioned here these all the topics are mentioned in the books in uh, in a very similar manner that i have told you so uh, after that much of coverage i can make you sure this is a adequate material you are having adequate exposure you are having with respect to this subject and you can be more confident after covering that much of syllabus so be confident be energetic uh, don't uh, have a lose faith on yourself have uh, all the positive energy with yourself while giving examination and uh, with this positive remark i am closing my uh, conversation with you and transferring a call to wish you sir so students now you have sufficiently been exposed uh, about the contents of the subject and what strategy you should adopt in examination and uh, i'm sure if you follow proper strategy and also pay adequate attention to the test series of made easy definitely uh, you will be in a position to crack all the questions in the examination and uh, uh, on behalf of made easy we wish you all the very best of success in the examination thank you a very last thing that i would like to tell you is uh, whatever the wishes sir has told you the test series is very important you cannot neglect you cannot bypass the test series if you need to judge the strategy of the examination if you need to uh, know where you are lacking then the test series must before to the test series i would like to advise you all go through the medici workbook medici class notes thoroughly and if you are giving a test series then then you will get to know where you are lacking right and uh, i had a words with very uh, various uh, students of the medici uh, those who have cracked the upsc engineering services in 2017 and 18 they have told me clearly whatever the question paper was there in a medici test series that is having a certainly the same level uh, whatever the upsc is having so therefore the test series become must for you to judge your performance so best of luck be confident be energetic jai hind thank you so much